Hi, my name is Chris, and this is my family. Here we are, sailing in a tiny little boat me and my son made from three sheets of plywood and a bunch of stuff from the hardware store. In the last video, I showed you how we made the floaty part of the boat. Today I'm going to show you how we made the mast, the sail, the leeboard, and the rudder. So, if you remember from the last video, the first piece I ripped off my 16 foot 2x10 was a 2.5 inch wide board to be used for the mast. The only problem was, I did a really bad job cutting it. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it I didn't want to waste my board, so I ended up epoxying another little piece of wood on top of there, cutting it again, and pretending it never happened. Then I could make my mast following the directions for the simple 2x4 mast from the PD Racer website. The main piece is tapered from 2.5 inches down to 1.5 inches at the top, and the taper starts about 5 feet up the mast. I transferred those markings to my piece of wood, taped a piece of string between the markings, and used that string as a guide to draw the line. I cut along that line as best I could, kind of freehanding it on the table saw, and then made a fancy ladder based support system to hold the mast as I sanded it. Having learned from my mast cutting debacle and with my helper at school, I needed to level up my ladder based support system so I could rip another strip off my 2x10. So I added a doorway blocking component to the system. Works great, as long as you never need to close the door. Then I was able to easily rip a half inch strip off my 2x10, cut that strip into two 5 foot lengths, and glued the two strips on either side of the bottom section of the mast. It took every clamp I had to get enough clamping pressure to hold the strip down properly. I didn't really want to use the screw clamps and put holes in my mast, but it turned out I kinda needed to in order to get a good glue bond everywhere. With the glue cured I used a hand plane to round off the mast, until it was able to fit through a 2.5 inch hole. That's the size of hole we have in the top of our boat, so it's kind of important that it fits. Using the hole template also helps to show where the high spots are that need to be taken down a little bit. On the upper part of the mast I used a router and a hand plane to round off the corners of that section as well. The mast is going to rest on a 5 16 inch bolt that goes through the mast step, so I needed to make a groove for it to sit in. I drilled a hole, did a pretty poor job cutting with the jigsaw, so I kept cutting it with the jigsaw. A little bit of filing with a coarse file, and pretty soon the bolt fit in the slot. When I tried it in the boat, I realized I had made the slot a little bit too deep, which meant I had to sand the base of the mast down a little bit to compensate. While I was sanding, I figured I might as well sand it at the same angle as the bottom of the boat. It seemed to pass boat inspection. I also wanted to create a way to prevent water from leaking into the front airbox along the mast. So I made two rings from quarter inch plywood and glued them together. Then I slid them onto the mast and glued them so they would end up just a couple millimeters above the deck of the boat when the mast was in its hole. I scavenged some floor sawdust and mixed it with PL Premium to fill the little gaps in the corners of the mast. I also drilled a hole at the top of the mast to hold the sail up. After the mast was varnished, I cut two donuts from 2mm thick craft foam and slid them up the base of the mast. These will act as a gasket when the mast is in place to help seal up that front airbox. Of course our sail needs a boom or else it would just be flapping around. So we cut a 1.5 inch square by 9.5 feet long piece of wood. I rounded it off to make it look pretty, drilled a hole in one end and a notch in the other. Varnished it up and done. The rudder we're making is a kick up rudder, so when you get into shallow water it can flip up and not drag on the bottom. We made some prototypes out of cardboard to make sure everything would work, and then traced three of them onto our quarter inch plywood. Of course it would be easier to just cut one out of three quarter inch plywood, but gluing the three together should create a stronger piece. I'd say it's really important not to skimp on glue here, because if you do you might end up with air gaps between the layers, and then water will get in there and everyone will be unhappy. We stacked up our layers to make our rudder sandwich, and then clamped the snot out of it. Once the glue was cured, Sam sanded it smooth. We wanted the tiller on our rudder to be able to pivot up and down. On such a small boat, it's nice to be able to lift it to go over someone's head if you need to. So we glued three 3 quarter inch thick pieces of wood together, and tested it to see if it would fit over our rudder. It did not quite fit, so back to the table saw. That's better. We drilled a pivot hole through the tiller and through the rudder, and popped in a bolt. A pivot bolt. We put another bolt through all three layers of the tiller handle to strengthen that section. I should mention that later on I changed both of these bolts into eye bolts, to give loops for the lines to run through for raising and lowering the rudder. I tapered the wide part of the tiller down to make it look more aesthetically pleasing, and rounded the edges with my router. I needed some stainless steel to make some gudgeons, so I bought a stainless steel fry pan from the thrift store. 
sold as is. I don't think I'll be returning it anyways. If you're wondering what a gudgeon is besides being a super cool word, the gudgeons are basically going to be the hinges for the rudder. Anyways, once I was finished extracting my sheet of stainless steel and creating a magical looking glass, I glued my gudgeon patterns to the bottom of the pan. I grabbed my trusty jeweler saw and cut them all out. If you don't have a jeweler saw, you should, they're pretty awesome. I'll include a link in the description to a video on my other channel that talks all about them. I center punched and then drilled out all the holes, starting with a small drill bit and working my way up, just to try and keep the hole from wandering off from its center. I found a stainless steel rod I had saved from an old printer, and that's what's going to go through those holes. I smoothed out the edges so they wouldn't cut anyone's fingers off, and used a vise and hammer combo to bend the rounded part of the rudder gudgeons in one direction, and the longer, squarer sections the other way. It was a little awkward because my vise kept getting in the way, but we got her done. The transom gudgeons are the same process, but there's only two flanges to bend. However, because of their width, they're a little trickier to get the bend right on the line. And that's important because the holes need to line up perfectly for the pin to go through at the end. Speaking of the pin, we bent one end of it at a right angle as well. A quick bath in some water removed the glued on paper from the gudgeons, and then we installed the transom gudgeons on the transom, using the stainless steel rod to keep everything lined up vertically. Then we could insert the rudder gudgeons into the transom gudgeons, and drilled holes through the rudder so we could bolt it in place. Annoying squeaking sound. Before the final installation, we put a bit of butyl rubber on the gudgeons to keep water from going in the screw holes. We drilled a hole in the bottom of the hinge pin, so we could put a keyring through it to keep it from pulling out at an inopportune time. For the blade of the rudder, I found a piece of wood that I had tried to make into a wind-powered skateboard when I was a kid. It had a lot of knots and cracks, but it was nice and straight with no warping. So I went to town filling all the nasty bits with my glue paste. One of the nice things about that paste is it's really easy to clean up with a hand plane once it's cured. Sam grabbed a jar of random bolts and used that to trace the curve for the leading edge of the rudder. Cut the rudder down to length, and then cut the curve. Smoothed it off, and then drilled a hole for the bolt to go through to act as the pivot point. Now the problem with a kick-up rudder is that wood likes to float, so we need a way to hold it down in the water so it's not always kicked up. A lot of people seem to put a weight in the bottom of the blade, so we did a high-tech test to see how much weight we'd actually need. We started with one random block of steel, but that wasn't enough, so we added a couple of cupboard knobs as well. Even with that, the blade still wanted to float up, so we figured we'd need a different way to hold it down. While thinking about alternative holding down systems, I spent some time giving the rudder blade a foil shape. You know how airplane wings are shaped to give lift and less drag? Well, the same basic principles apply to a board going through the water. If we just left it flat, it would slow our boat down quite a bit. If we round the front and back edges, it gets better, but the very best is a rounded front edge and then a back edge that tapers off. We didn't taper the back edge all the way down because we didn't want it to get too fragile. And the bottom edge just gets rounded off. One of the few things we couldn't find at a hardware store were these stainless steel deck loops. We attached this one at the back of the rudder so it could be used to pull the rudder up. To keep the rudder from going down too far and smashing into the gudgeons, we found a rubber chair foot, cut it down a little bit, and screwed it in place. Then we took everything apart and varnished it all up. Once the varnish was dry, we could put it back together. A bolt and fender washer through the pivot hole, an old CD over the bolt, and the blade over the CD. Hold it all together with another fender washer and a nylock nut. One stainless eye bolt to help hold the tiller together, and a second one with a nylock nut to allow the tiller to pivot. For holding the rudder down, we ended up deciding to use a bungee cord. That way if we sailed over something, like a submarine, the rudder would just bounce up and over top. So we used our jeweler's saw to cut the hooks off a bungee cord we had, pushed a bolt through the loop on one end, and used a piece of tubing to help feed a bit of line through the loop on the other end. The bolt attaches the bungee to the front of the rudder blade, and the other end gets threaded through the front eye bolt on the tiller, and then that line can get attached to a cleat further up. This way we can adjust how much tension is pulling down on the rudder blade. The line to lift the rudder blade goes through the back eye bolt on the tiller, and gets secured by a cleat on the top. And that's the rudder. Done. Alright, this is the plywood we had left over from our original three sheets. We wanted a three quarter inch thick lee board, so we used those two plus one I had left over from my quick canoe. We decided to glue them together just like we did for the top of the rudder. We thought it might be a good idea to glue the pieces together one at a time, rather than all three at once, because we weren't sure how well we'd be able to clamp them all together. The first set we put together actually worked out pretty good. We spread lots of glue on one side, 
put the two pieces together, and then set a bunch of garbage cans and buckets with water in them on top to clamp them down. One thing that did happen was a lot of condensation came off our buckets because the water was so cold. It got our wood really wet. Our second board didn't glue up quite as well because I think we just didn't have enough glue on it. However, our little apple tree was happy because it got well watered. With our Lee board glued together, we cleaned up the edges on the table saw, which made the gaps in the glue up pretty obvious. Apparently, we also rounded that bottom corner at some point. Now we want to give the Lee board a foil shape the same way we did the rudder. So we marked the center of the plywood on both sides for reference and started shaping. This time we used a template for the front edge to try and make sure everything was nice and consistent. The template I'm using is part of Mix Storer's Oz Racer plans. With the front edge complete, I made a line about 4 inches in from the back edge, and then tapered from that line to the back of the Lee board. Again, I didn't bring it right to a point on the back for not breaking. I did try to fix up some of the areas where the plywood sheets weren't totally glued together, but those came apart again after a few hours in the water. What I ended up doing was filling it all with epoxy later. I finished drilling the pivot hole through the boat, which kinda wrecked it a little bit, and then marked the pivot point onto the Lee board. Drilled a nice perpendicular hole for the bolt to fit through, which turned out actually to not be perpendicular at all. So then I did what I probably should have originally done, I clamped the Lee board to the boat, and then drilled through from the inside. Tried the bolt again, and this time, it worked. We then traced a bucket, and cut a nice aesthetic curve. We made the control arm for the Lee board from a 20 inch long piece of wood. We rounded off both ends, and drilled holes in each of them as well. The bottom hole fits over the Lee board pivot bolt, and the top hole is going to get a piece of rope through it that'll pull it up and down. For some reason, I thought the top hole should be all smoothly rounded, so I used a router bit in my drill, turning in reverse to make that happen. We glued the control arm onto the Lee board at a 45 degree angle, and when it was cured, we varnished everything up. We then grabbed our favorite CD, and slid it on the Lee board pivot bolt, to act as a thin spacer between the side of the boat and the Lee board. We installed a stainless steel deck loop at the back, and one at the front, with a little pulley attached to it. Then we added a homemade cleat near the back as well. We ran a line through the top hole of the control arm and knotted it on each side, one of the sides with a loop. Hooked a bungee cord from that loop to the deck loop at the back, and then the other end of that line runs through the pulley at the front and back to the back cleat. Now we can raise the Lee board from the back of the boat by pulling on the line, and when we release the line, the bungee cord pulls the Lee board back down into the water. It's also possible to adjust the Lee board so it sits a bit farther forward. That's helpful if we use a smaller sail where the center of effort is nearer the front of the boat. And that is our Lee board. Alright, I think that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one, where I show you how we made the sail, the cleats, and how we rigged it all up. Thanks for watching. See ya.